Hey guys! Oh, I said I wasn't going to say hey guys, so I guess I'll be saying hello there, friends. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on, this is a um, cover for a cooler on a boat. So you can see here, it's a pretty simple cushion cover. So this is what we're going to do today. But what's different is we're not going to be making this from patterns. And I'm going to show you that secret. Or let's just say that a different method or technique. I usually start with this insert right here. So what we really got to do is either take the measurement right there, right there. Okay, so I can go ahead and actually just draw it out. We saw 22 by 16, right, on the material. Right there. So we can cut that out and use that as our pattern. Or the technique number 855. We can take our cushion and line it up with the edges just like that. Then I could take something like my Sharpie right here. And oops, oops, oops. Just like that, just like that, right? Look at that. And then move this out of the way. And there you go. Let's cut it out. People always say, well, do you have to cut it by the 16th of an inch? No, you don't. I'm just going to make a couple little curves here for the corners, just like that. Wow, I already did it. So now what we have is we have our top insert there. Look at that. What the, com what the customer wanted was a smooth and plain insert. I wrote a note to myself. And the customer, so that way I know who to give it back to. So there we go. That's the first step. So the next step is going to be to make this skirt that goes around the edge here, the sides. That's what I call a skirt anyway. Everybody's got a different name, so you can tell me in the comments what I'm supposed to be calling it. Like you guys usually do. So anyway, this is what they did the last time. Okay, I've never done it that way. I just don't like the way that looks. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making just a couple of seams, probably one like in that area, another one like in that area. So it's going to be two pieces. It's going to be around the front and then one piece here for the rear. So all we really got to do at that point is take our measurement So it really ends, it ends right there. So it doesn't wrap around anything. So we're gonna be putting, putting some hide strip like this back on again. So what I usually like to do is always leave some kind of overlap anyway. So what I'm measuring here is about four and a half inches. So I'm gonna make a four and a half inch wide strip. And the first one for the long area, Let's see what we come up with here. So I'm going to take this measurement. Okay, what I'm seeing here is probably about uh, 63 inches to do it. So I'm going to make a 63 inch long strip by four and a half inches wide. I'm just using vinyl that I had on hand. Sometimes I end up with a little bit extra after I'm finished with the project. So this is what I got. Let's see if we can do a 63 inch long piece of this somewhere. No, it doesn't look like it. I'm going to have to measure the longest distance on this here. So because I'm making this cover with just pieces that I had on hand, which is what the customer said, is I guess you want to save a little bit of money. What I'm measuring here right now 
is uh, 55 inches, which is really the width of the material. So when I go to measure the cushion now, plan B, if I measure right here from this corner to this corner right there, 55 inches, look at that. So that's where I'm going to be putting our seam now. Let's change it up a little bit. So now, instead of what I thought was going to be here, it's really going to be like right here. Just like that. Now let's get our four and a half inch width measurement. That's a good place to start. Four and a half. Now I know you, there's going to be some guys out there that are going to say, why are you using a Sharpie? Because a Sharpie is going to bleed through that vinyl. And you know what? I don't mark anywhere where the vinyl is going to be, where it's going to bleed through the vinyl and be seen. These are just lines on the edge that I'm cutting. So don't get too excited. You know, you can't use white chalk or a white china marker on white vinyl. It doesn't show up very well. Just like that. So that's our front piece. What this is going to do, this is a piece in the front. This is the one that's going to be seen. So that's what that's going to look like right there. So now we need a piece for the welt or beading. Some people call it beading. Professionally, I know it is welt. So I'm going to make it, uh, let's see, let's do a one and a quarter inch width all the way down. For those of you that doubt that we're not going to have any bleeding of Sharpie, when you see the end product, you're going to uh, probably agree with me then at that point that you don't see any blue anywhere. Blue Sharpie. I usually use black, but I just grab the closest thing I can reach. So that will make up our welt right there, but it's not going to be long enough to go all the way around. So I'm just going to take another piece right here from right here. So it really only needs to be like 22 inches, I guess. But in this piece here that I'm holding right now is about 30. So it's way too long, but I'm not going to let that bother me right now. As you can tell, I'm pretty chill sometimes. I don't let little things bother me. I just make things happen. This is all about making patterns from measurements, not making patterns from patterns. So what we're going to do here, we're going to put this together. I'm going to find the center. Just going to mark it just like that. Hold it, mark it, mark it on both sides. So we know that center right there, that's where I'm going to start. Okay, same thing with the long piece here. Hold that in half. Both sides. Just like that. Normally we'd have the luxury of having one continuous long piece of vinyl here to make our weld. But we don't have that luxury today. So because of that... We'll make it work. So for you guys that call it beading, this is how I order it. And I order it as welt. So 
So this is Welt Insert. Okay. So those of you that are experienced are going to say, well, I already know that. But, you know, what we have here is a Welt foot. And you can see the curve right here. What that is, that's a guide. It's a Welt foot. Or I guess if you want to call it beading. So anyway, what that is, is the welt feeds underneath there like that, and it's a guide for the welt. That's why it's called a welt foot. It's not called a beating foot, I don't think, unless if that's what you call it. But, you know, there's some people that are tuning in for the first time that they're learning. So, you know, we got, we're going to teach, right? You, you know, you had, to, you had to learn that yourself at, at some point. I get a lot of comments about what size welt I'm using. If you saw earlier, what you saw was a 432nd welt insert. I'm just using my hands as guides. I guess it takes a little bit of practice. But you know what? When you're doing your learning, there, my friends, is Welt. Look at that. Now all we have left to do is just to put all the pieces together. You'll notice I didn't lock that stitch because it's not, it's not necessary. This is just sewing on the welt. Or beading. One thing you could do on corners is sometimes you can make relief cuts like this. That does help the welt to go, or beading, go around the corners. Now what we'll do is we'll make our seam on the end. So what I usually do is I cut it about a half inch longer than where I think it's going to be. Like that. And then another half inch overlap. Look like that. So you see how they overlap like that? So now we got to take apart some of this thread. Some of this thread. Move the welt out, insert out of the way. We're going to sew these two ends here together. Let me know if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, okay? I'll slow it down. Usually what I'll do is I'll leave one end long. One, one end of this welt insert long, and I'll trim the other one short. Okay, we'll move this here out of the way. That way we can tuck that like that. 
fold it over. Remember we marked our centers right there on that piece and also on this piece. Now it's time to put these together. So we'll match our markings right here. Put those together. Remember the welt foot uses that welt as a guide. Okay, I just did a lock stitch because we're putting the main pieces together. So we'll start from the center, work our way out. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Later on, we're going to join this, the ends. Here. Okay, we got that side. So now what we do is we flip everything over. Start from the center again. You don't have to lock this one because it's already locked there. I'm going to go ahead and lock that stitch right there. Now we'll do the back. So now this is where things get a little more exciting. We're going to join these two together, the front and the back pieces. See that right there? So it's this point where we can either leave it like that or we can do a top stitch. So, you know what, let's give him a little bit extra, more than what he was expecting. Let's go ahead and do a top stitch on here for him. So, because we already locked that stitch right there, we don't have to lock this one. So just like we did on that welt, what we do is we see that that corner's right there. So what we are going to do is just go about an inch past this end right here. And that's what we're going to cut right there. Thank you. 
Make a nice 90 degree cut. Okay, now we're gonna sew these two pieces here together. We'll do a nice top stitch for him, just like we did on the other side. All that's left to do now is just finish up this corner. And there we go. I think we're done. Are we done? Did we just make a cover without using patterns? So we did it with measurements. Let's check it out. It makes it snug, not loose. That's the way we like it. That's just preliminary, right? They still gotta take the other one off. Peekaboo. My smoking hot wife wanted to help me here in the shop. She saw me working here. She says, oh, here, let me do this, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. She does help me here sometimes. Helps to speed things up. Mostly she's taking something apart while I'm making something. Now she's demonstrating technique number 832. Okay, this is a much quicker, speedier way of getting things done. And she's going to show you how it's done. Instead of spending all that time taking out the staples. There she goes. How do you like that? Just like that. Now it's time to just put everything together.
Not too hard to do. So you can see what I do is I usually take my hand like this and I put it my hand in the corner and then just roll it. So usually what I'll do is I'll secure four corners first. The plastic sure is slippery. One thing I like to do is to turn the welt. Make sure that the back side of this welt is all facing the same direction. So the best of your ability, just get in there and turn it. There we go. See, because if it's turned the other way, it's going to start looking like waves. We don't want that. Just to show you what I'm talking about, you can see the welt is turned this way. We need it to be turned down this way. See that right there? Let's see what happens when I turn it. So I turned it towards me now. Look at that. Now we have extra material here to trim off. So we'll cut that excess off. That's why I always leave the material just a little bit long. So it's always better to trim something off later than to come up too short in the beginning. Now this is what we call hide them. Because when you put the staples down inside that little channel right there, it hides them. It hides them, the staples them. So what I do is I go from end, then I pull on it, stretch it, and go to the other end and set it there. Because the reason I do that is because if you started here and just started stapling down the line like this, it start, could start looking like the Dixie Highway, like that. And we don't want that. So what we do is just pull it straight, set it where you want it, and then we'll put a staple right there. So we'll set all the corners just like that. We'll come back later and we'll fill in the middle. One thing I do to make life easier is before I took off the hinges, I marked here with the white china marker where the hinges used to be. And I know that there's two screws there. So I take a peek under there and I can see the hole for the screw. So I take something like this, I mark the hole. And so that way I can see it, mark it. Right there. Mark it. So now I know that that's where that hinge goes. So before, there was no hide them under the hinge. So we're going to do the same thing. They must have did it that way for a reason. Okay. 
Do the same here. Find the hole. See it right there. This way, when I go to put the hinges on, there's no guessing. Now we could fill in the middle. Okay, let's put the hinges on. So anyway, like I was saying, 